Okay, so uh, we've talked about the sum to difference formulas, and we, or I made the comment that all these other ones can result in the other formulas. So I thought we might just try that, and then we'll we'll do some examples of using the other formulas. That's section five is the double angle, the half angle, the sum to product, the the uh, power reducing, et cetera, et cetera, all these. So let's just take, for example, this one, sine of 2a is equal to this 2 times the sine of a times the cosine of a. And you may say, well, that doesn't look like alpha plus beta. But what you could do is you could say that sine of a plus a. So 2a is 1a plus 1a. And then if we use uh, this formula, what we would get is we would get the sine of a times the cosine of a. So that's first term. Plus the cosine of a times the sine of a, since alpha and beta are the same. So you get the sine of a, cosine of a, sine of a, cosine of a, which would be 2 times the sine of a times the cosine of a. So there you go. So that's how that one works. Uh, you know, the next one, cosine of 2a, let's do that one. Cosine of 2a is going to be the same as the cosine of a plus a. And so that's where alpha and beta are the same. So we're going to use this one right here. So we have the cosine of a times the cosine of a minus the sine of a times the sine of a. And so that's cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. So that's this one. And then the other two you can get using the Pythagorean identity. So you could replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. Or you can replace cosine squared with um, 1 minus sine squared. And that's why there's only one choice here for the sine of 2a, because it doesn't involve something squared, but when you do the cosine of 2a. Now, um, yeah, same thing here. Tangent of 2a is going to be tangent of a plus tangent of a, which is 2 tangent of a. And you get 1 minus tangent of a times tangent of a, which is tangent squared of a. So, so that's, uh, that one obviously works. Now, if you had the sine of... Um, here where you, they're using u, so the sine of u over 2. So I guess what I'm thinking is you could do the sine of, what would it be? Um, hmm. What could it be? So it involves a, let's see on here, it involves the square root of 1 minus cosine. So, I'm trying to think here. So, I'm going to pause for just a second. I've not done this before. So, okay, so I think I figured it out here. So, what we'd actually do is now that we have these double identical formulas, we could take this one cosine of 2a is equal to 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. So if you add 1 to both sides, you get the cosine of 2a plus 1 is equal to 2 cosine squared of a. And then you divide both sides by 2. So you get cosine of 2a plus 1 divided by 2 equals the cosine squared of a. And if you take the square root, you get the cosine of a equals plus or minus the square root of 1 cosine of 2a over 2. But if you go back to the beginning and let a, 2a equals u, then you get, um, or a is equal to u over 2. You can make that substitution. So you get the cosine of u over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of u divided by 2. Ta-da! 
and then I think you'd use the Pythagorean identity to get the sine sine of u. So if you squared this, if you started at this point and replace cosine squared of a with one minus sine squared of a, then what would happen is you could uh, you'd subtract one from both sides, and then. So I think that's how you get those. Okay, so that's half angle formulas are not used as much. Double angles, yes, more so. And then uh, these down here, the power reducing ones, I think you could just use, uh, again, use these equations and it's, instead of solving for. So let's just do it here. So we'll, again, use this one right here. So you know, the cosine of 2a is equal to 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. So if we add 1 to both sides, you get cosine of 2a plus 1 equals 2 cosine squared of a. And divide by 2, so you get, and switch sides, you get cosine squared of a is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2a over 2. And there you go. That's, that's this one down here. And again, I think you could use the, the Pythagorean identity. You know, that Pythagorean identity would be cosine squared of a equals one minus sine squared of a. So if you plug that in there, you get one minus sine squared of a equals one half plus cosine of two a divided by two. So I'm taking this and divide it into two fractions. <clears throat> and then uh, what I'm trying to do here is solve for this. So if I move this to the other side, this would become um, one minus a half. So that'd be a half. Uh, moving this from the right hand side, to the left hand side becomes the cosine of 2a over 2. And this negative sine squared becomes positive sine squared. And then you can just switch sides, sine squared of a equals 1 minus cosine of 2a divided by 2, which is the first one. Uh, yeah, so how do you do this? The sum to product, I think what you would do is you would, uh, hmm, I'm not sure what you do there. I think product to sum, you'd use these and go backwards, I believe. Anyway, uh, you know, we don't need to know how they all came about, but apparently they all, the book says, so I want to assume the book's right, that these all come. Okay, so how do we use these things? Well, we can't do the calculus stuff because we don't know calculus yet, but there are some examples that we can use. So, for example, if I'm given this equation, find the exact solutions of sine of 2x minus sine x equals 0 with the solution between 0 and 2 pi, what you would do is, let me just cover this up so we can, I can explain it without just regurgitating what I've already written down. So, what you need to do in these cases is you need to rewrite this formula in terms of either sine or cosine. And the one that makes the most sense is to write this in terms of sine, because I've already got a sine here. So if I rewrote the sine of 2x in terms of cosine, it wouldn't work. And I think there's only one choice anyway. So if we go back to our list of formulas, Probably the best thing to do is to bring this sheet forward again until we get to where about where we're, we're needed. Um, did I copy the wrong one? I might have. Yeah, I did. Okay, let me move this thing. Okay. So. Let me just get rid of this page. I think I got it accidentally stuck in there. Okay, so there we go. 
so we look over here at the double angle formula, the sine of 2a. So my formula sheet says the sine of 2a equals 2 sine of a cosine of a. Now you may think, oh, but I thought you said we just need to write this in terms of sine. And I guess I was partly right about that. But let's, let's plug it in there and I'll show you how you do it. So what we do is replace the sine of 2x with 2 times the sine of x cosine of x. And then we just bring this second part down, sine of x. And uh, the other option besides putting in a terms of one variable or one type of trig function is if you're able to factor something out, which I am. You can see that I have the sine of x in both terms, so I can factor that out. And I've got two solutions. One is this product is 0 when the sine of x equals 0. And the other one is when the cosine, 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So the first one we would do by just thinking about unit circle coordinates on the uh, coordinate axes. So this is 1 comma 0, this is 0 comma 1, this is negative 1 comma 0, this is uh, 0 comma negative 1. So remember the sign, the sign of a function on the unit circle is the y coordinate. So here's a case where the y coordinate is 0, and here's another one. So from here, there's two solutions. x equals 0 radians, or I guess 0 degrees, and x equals 180 or pi, pi radians. Let's stick with pi. Pi radians. So we get two solutions out of that one. And then over here, if we solve for the cosine of x, we'll get the cosine of x equals 1 half. So the cosine is positive in the first and third quadrants. So that means a quadrant one solution and a quadrant three solution. So then we can find the reference angle. It's equal to the inverse cosine, because I have a cosine here of the absolute value one half. So we get our calculator out, check our mode, okay, put in radians inverse cosine of one half. So get the reference angle is equal to 1.047 radians. Or divide that by pi and I get 0.333 pi radians or pi over three. Okay, so that's that's my reference angle. Then my first quadrant solution, x, is just equal to the reference angle, which is pi over 3. And my fourth quadrant solution is 2 pi minus the reference angle. So that's 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is okay, 6 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So this gave me two solutions, and I get two additional solutions. I get x is equal to pi over 3, and I get x is equal to 5 pi over 3. So I think I plotted this, and we'll see if those four solutions show up. So here it is, 0, pi over 3, pi, 5 pi over 3, and then we go back to 2 pi, and then we have it repeat itself. So this is a plot of the sine of 2x minus sine x equals 0. If it was the cosine of 2x, I'd use one of those double angle formulas. And it may not necessarily have been the same format. Well, let's, let's just try that. Let's, first, let's plot it, just kind of curious. So if we had the cosine of 2x plus cosine of x. 
If you plot that, what does it look like between 0 and 2 pi? 2 pi. So you got 1, 2, 3, 3 solutions. So it's, we're not going to solve for it. We'll just show you how you would do it. Cosine of 2x plus the cosine of x equals 0. So let's pull up our trig identity sheet here. Stick it in there. So in this case, we got three choices. So we've got cosine squared minus sine squared, 2 cosine squared minus 1, or 1 minus 2 cosine squared. So I think the middle one makes the most sense. So what we do is we'd say 2 cosine, for cosine of 2x, we'd put in 2 cosine squared of x minus 1, so that's that substitution, plus the cosine of x equals 0. And if we rearrange it, so we have the squared term first, the not squared term second, and that. And so you could factor it, and you'd have 2 cosine x in the first factor, and you'd have cosine of x in the second factor. And because this is plus cosine of x, I need to add my 1 here, so I get plus 1 times 2, which is plus 2, and then I put the negative 1 here. And so you see that works. So you've got the case where the cosine of x equals a half. We, we just did that. That was pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And then here is where the cosine of x equals negative 1, which is pi. And if we go back and look at that, so I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm doing it. Um, you can see here's pi over 3 is right there. So that's, and then there's 5 pi over 3 here. And then we have pi. So there you go. That didn't take very long, did it? OK, next one is uh, the power reducing formula. And let's say, how do you rewrite this cosine to the fourth of x into something that just involves the cosines, not cosine squared, but just cosines. Okay, so let's show you how to do that. I'm not. So cosine to the fourth is cosine squared of x squared. So like x squared squared is x to the fourth. So cosine squared of x squared is x to the fourth. So these are the same. And what I can do is I can use this <coughs> power reducing formula, which says cosine squared of u equals 1 plus cosine of 2u. This actually goes all the way like that. 1 plus cosine of 2u over 2. So let's, let's pull my formula sheet out and show you where that is. OK. So it's this one right down here at the bottom. Cosine squared of u equals 1 plus cosine 2u over 2. OK. So what we get is we replace cosine squared of u with 1 plus cosine of 2, or cosine squared of x with 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. And then you use FOIL to evaluate this expression. So you get 1 half times 1 half, which is a fourth. And then you get 1 half times cosine of 2x over 2. Here's the, well, yeah. So what you can do is break it up into 1 half, two fractions, 1 half plus cosine of 2x over 2. And then you use FOIL, take this times itself. And what you'll get is you'll get that. So a half times a half is a quarter. Half times cosine of 2x over 2 is cosine of 2x over 4, but you get two of those because you get one in the inner and one in the outer. So that two quarters gives you a half. And then you have the last, which is cosine squared of 2x over 4. So now we've got a constant, and we've got a term involving cosine of 2x, but we still have this squared. So we have to use the power reducing formula again for this last term. Now, the difference is, earlier we had cosine of cosine squared of x. 
In this case, we've got cosine squared of 2x. So, so where you have x in the formula, you, you substitute 2x. So if we go down to this formula, the power reducing formula, 1 plus cosine of 2x, instead of that, we'll have 1 plus cosine of 4x, because it's twice the argument. So this, well, yeah, what I'm doing here is just saying cosine of 2x squared is cosine squared of 2x. So it's just difference in um, notation. Then, like I just said, to this last term, you factor out the, the 1 fourth. So that's where the fourth comes from. And then you use the power reducing formula. So the cosine squared of 2x is 1 plus cosine of 4x all over 2. And then you plug that back in there. And you'll notice that I have this constant 1 fourth. And I'm going to have another 1 fourth times a half, which is an eighth. So I guess I get probably get 3 eighths there. Yeah, so that's the next step. So I've just plugged it back in. And then a fourth times a half is an eighth. A fourth times a half is an eighth. And now I can combine these two constant terms. So I get 3 eighths. And if you wanted to factor out an eighth, you'd get one eighth times three plus four cosine two x plus cosine four x. So you can see the original expression cosine to the fourth of x, which is the fourth power, can be reduced to a single function. It's got more parts to it, but there's nothing squared anymore. And this is something you would use in calculus as well. So that's good. Okay, next one is the half angle formula. And the, the way they're demonstrating this is if you wanted to find, say, the cosine of um, half an angle, maybe you have an a, a cosine of an angle, and you want to know what the cosine of the half angle is, then you could use the formula. Uh, so earlier we used the um, product to sum formulas to answer, for example, what is the cosine of 15 degrees, but you could also do that using um, this formula. So that's another example of where you might use it besides here. So <clears throat> what we have is this triangle defined by the three sides. And so I don't know, you know, I don't know what theta is. I'd have to use my calculator to figure out what theta is. But from this triangle, I can figure out what the cosine is. It's going to be 15 over 7. So if I wanted to know what the cosine of half this angle was, if I, if I took, a, um, took a line here and went halfway up to this point, then uh, that would give me this would be theta over 2, which if you cut this in half, it's going to be 4. And then if you keep this side the same, I'm doing, I'm, so I'm going to answer the, pr the problem using just geometry, but then we can use the formula to show it's the same thing. So just using geometry, I'd say the, the cosine of theta over 2, uh, well, I need to know what the new hypotenuse is. So the hypotenuse squared is one side squared plus the other side squared. So 15, 15 squared plus 4 squared, 241. So the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 241. So the cosine of theta over 2 would be equal to the adjacent 15 divided by the square root of 241, which is 15 times the square root of 241 over 241. OK, so that's geometry. Now, if I, if I use this formula, it says the cosine of theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 
plus the cosine of theta. But the cosine of theta is 15 over 17, adjacent over hypotenuse. And I divide that by 2. So let's see what I get. So I'd combine the two terms in the numerator. So I'd have 17 sevenths plus 15 sevenths, which would be uh, 32 sevenths, 32 sevenths divided by 2. And then I'd have, take the reciprocal of that, so I'd have 32 over 34, square root of 32 over 34. And let's just plug the numbers in. We'll see if they are the same digit de decimal wise. And then if they are, then we'll figure out why they're the same, because they don't look the same right now. OK, so this is 0 0.966. And if I do this, 32 divided by 34, I'll take square root, I don't get the same answer. So I've done something wrong here. So let's think about what I did. 15 squared plus 4 squared. Well, let's first check the first triangle. 15 squared plus 8 squared is 289. Take the square root, which is 17. Okay, so that, that makes sense. Um, I can say the question is, is this true? If I break this in half, if I go halfway between those two, does that give me theta over 2? Seems like it ought to, but maybe that's not true. That's probably my, that's probably my flaw in my reasoning here, but that's not true. It does work if you have an equilateral triangle and you break that into two. That angle's the same. But I don't think that's true, possibly. Let's just try just checking my numbers. Yeah, I think that's my fallacy. So I should probably shouldn't have even talked about that, but we did learn something that just by cutting this in a half doesn't cut the angle in half. Okay. So the it, it came pretty close, but the, this is the right answer as long as it did everything else right. 32, 15 plus 17 is 32. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you would do it half angle formula. So here, here's another case of solving the equations. So find all the solutions from the sine of x over 2 plus the cosine of x. So what we want to do is again use one of these half angle formulas to rewrite this in terms of probably the cosine. So let's let's grab those formulas again. Drag it down here and then think about what we're going to do. Which one are we going to use? Well, there may not be a choice. So where, where are the half angle formulas? Here they are. So we only have one for the sine. Sine of u over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine. OK. So there's the formula I just pointed out. So if we make that substitution, you get plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine over 2 plus cosine of x equals 0. Now, I think what we can do is we can move this to the other side and then square both sides. But there is something that's kind of unique about this plus or minus thing, which I don't remember at the moment. But hopefully when I go through this, I'll remember it. OK, so we move that to the other side. becomes negative. We square it. Yeah, so if we square it, this doesn't matter. Because if it's minus squared 
becomes positive. It's positive. It becomes positive. So we can get rid by squaring this. We can get rid of the plus or minus. And here we can get rid of the minus because it's squared. So so that's how it's handled. Uh, then you can multiply both sides by two to get rid of the two in the denominator. So you get that. And then you put everything on one side. So you get 2 cosine squared of x plus cosine x minus 1. We saw something like this earlier. You can factor it to that. So one solution is the cosine of x equals negative 1, which is pi. It's a solution. And then 2 cosine x minus 1. We've seen that before. That's cosine of x equals 1 half. Solutions were pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So there are all the... Oh, actually, one's wrong here. So the cosine of x is <coughs> is negative 1 when that's the x coordinate. I don't know why I put 3 pi over 2. That doesn't make any sense. I think it's going to be that's going to be um, pi. And the cosine of x is a half. So you find the reference angle, which is pi over 3. You've got first and fourth quadrant solutions. We've done that before. So you get those two. And um, so that should be pi. And if we plot it, um, so what's going on here? Because x equals pi over 3, which is right here, but that doesn't intersect. So that doesn't make any sense either. So let's, maybe I didn't plot that right. So let me add a page. Let's go ahead and figure out. So we're going to plot. Maybe, well, maybe there's a, no, okay. Not sure why I had that there if it's not right. Okay, so we're going to plot the sine of x over 2. plus the cosine of x graph. OK, so that's the same one. But that doesn't agree with what I just got. So what does that mean? Why did that not work? Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, I could record this again, which I'm sure some of you wish I did. But you know, the reason I leave this is in is because you know you can end up. For one thing, you can see that I can verify my solution, which hasn't worked here in this case. So there's there's something that we have missed. I have missed. So the what is that? So I'm gonna pause. Oh, like, okay. Well, that's interesting. This is the only problem that has this situation. So they plot that function, and they say, hmm, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 didn't work. So my initial thought was I made a mistake. But I didn't. So what you can do is it says, by checking these values in the original equation, we see that they're extraneous. What does that mean? So let's try those. Let's say x equals pi over 3 plug it back in. I guess that shows that you should always plug them back in because you might think you have solutions, but they're not. I think I think it actually has to do with this. When we square this, we introduce extra solutions that are not there. So if we take the sine of pi over 3 divided by 2, um, plus the cosine of pi over 3 equals 0. And so we get the sine of pi over 6 plus the cosine of pi over 3. And let's think about that. If you have your unit circle, pull that out. So pi over 6 is here. And the sine of pi over 6 is is a half, so I get a half, plus the cosine of pi over 3, 
which is also a half. And it says a half plus a half is zero. One equals zero. Well, that can't work. And if you do the same thing for 5 pi over 3, you'll get the same kind of result. So I think what this is telling us is that this process of squaring here to solve things is you came out with these solutions that are really not there. I think the solutions, if you looked at it, those solutions would work here, but they don't work in the original equation. So let's see if that's true or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug plug them into here. So if I get 1 minus the cosine of pi over 3 divided by 2, is that equal to the cosine of pi over 3 quantity squared? So the cosine of pi over 3 is a half divided by 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half. Here I get 1 minus a half, which is a half, divided by 2. Here I get half squared, which is a fourth. And a half divided by 2 is a fourth, equals a fourth. Yes, it does. OK, you can see, after I squared the thing, pi over 3 is a solution. But the original equation, it doesn't work. So that's pretty interesting. And so it wasn't, it wasn't the power reducing formula or whatever the one that we used here, the half angle formula. It wasn't the half angle formula that was wrong. It was in trying to solve for it, we ended up losing some information. OK. And then the last one here, I think, is the last one, is using the product of sum formulas. And this just taking this expression and we can evaluate it using the unit circle but we can use the f formula to show that we get the same answer if you if you um, expand it out so let's find where's my formula sheet okay so let's just evaluate it you know, 4 times the cosine of pi over 3, which is a half. Again, how I did that without using my calculator. Have my unit circle. Pi over 3 is here. This comes down to, to bisect that. So that means this is pi over 3. And so that gives you a half. And then the sine of 5 pi over 6. So that 5 pi over 6 is right here. And if you... Um, because that's 6 pi over 6 is here, and you go 1 6 back, 1 pi over 6 back, so that leaves that. And if you draw over here, you get a half on the y axis, so it's a half. So the answer is 1. Now, if we use the uh, product of sum formula, which is right down here, the cosine of a times the sine of a, so that's the third one here, is 1 half the sine of a plus b minus the sine of a minus b. So let's plug, see what that looks like. So this is the one, cosine of u sine of v, or cosine of a sine of b, the matter. And if you plug in, you know, this cosine argument is u and the sine argument is v. And you plug those into the product to sum formula, you'll get u plus v is pi over 3 plus 5 pi over 6, which is going to be, this is 2 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. So that's the sine of 7 pi over 6. And then you subtract the difference. So u minus v. So we got pi over 3 minus 5 pi over 6. That's 2 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 6, minus 3 pi over 6, which is negative pi over 2. But the, the sine of 
negative pi over 2 is going to be negative 1, I guess, right? Because um, negative pi over 2 is the same as 3 pi over 2, you know, if, we, if we think about these angles. 3 pi over 2 goes this way, we get to the negative y-axis, or we can go to negative pi over 2, so they have the same thing. And because the y-coordinate is the sine, I know that the sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, because that's y, y equals negative 1 at that point. So what I get is power reducing formula says 1 half, so I get a 1 half times my original constant for the sine of 7 pi over 6, which is negative a half. And so again, that you can get that off your unit circle. 7 pi over 6 would be here, and that would go over to a y coordinate of negative a half. So I get negative a half, and then I subtract the sine of 3 pi over 2, or the sine of negative pi over 2. It's negative 1. So you get negative 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1, which is exactly what we got originally. That's not, in this case, using this product to some formula doesn't make life easier, but it does demonstrate that the formula does work. That's the basic idea here. So some of these problems for homework are to help you solve things, and some of them are just to demonstrate the formulas actually do work. Okay, now the next, the last one is sum to product, I guess you would call it. Is that right? So let's take our our uh, formula sheet here. So if we had the sine of 5 theta minus the sine of theta, so that is a, that's a difference, right? Sine of u minus the sine of v. That's equal to 2 cosine of u plus v over 2 times the sine of u minus v over 2. So again, we're just going to demonstrate how you would apply the formula. So we just define you know, x and y, here, here we're using x and y instead of u and v, but, you know, look at the original equation, x is 5 theta, y is 3 theta, so we'd get 2 times the cosine of 5 theta plus 3 theta, which would be 8 theta. 8 theta divided by 2 would give you 4 theta, and then the second term would be 5 theta minus 3 theta, which would be 2 theta, so we get 2 theta over 2, which is just theta. And so another way to write this original equation, which is a difference, we can write it as a product, just using the sum to product instead of the product to sum. And that's the assignment I would normally give, but I'm just going to tell you to, um, to do the homework assignment that I have in Canvas. So now what you want to do is you want to, if you, if you don't think you know how to use these things yet and you need a little more practice, uh, go to the examples video, watch those problems. At that point, you should have seen enough problems that you, you can then attempt the homework assignment. And then if you have any issues with working the homework assignments, you can watch the video with the solutions.